Once I get done with that cross member today, we'll go back and pull measurements and square and make sure everything is squared up. And then hopefully we'll weld this out today. That is the plan to get this welded out. Back out here again today working on the frame and the other night when I packed everything up I put it inside in the shop so I actually picked this frame up and took it inside to hopefully keep it from rusting we got to do the second cross member and it's further back in the trailer and I can't slide this out further to get to that so when I brought it back out I flipped it upside down and I'm gonna put tacks on the top of these here they're tacked on the they are tacked on the top this is technically the bottom this is the top of the frame underneath they're already tacked here and in order to get back there, I've got to flip this trailer frame completely around so that it sits down here. And I wanted to ensure that nothing was really gonna move. So I wanted tacks on what is the bottom of the frame. And you also notice that I don't put any tacks in the corners here. I really, really try not to put tacks in the corners because they're always a pain in the butt to get to. And if you add more and more stuff on, the spaces get tighter and it's harder to get in there to break those tacks. But I really want to put more tacks on here to ensure that when I move this, nothing's going to move once i get done with that cross member today we'll go back and pull measurements and square and make sure everything is squared up and then hopefully we'll weld this out today that is the plan to get this welded out today i don't know we're going to try it's already lunch time i've got somewhere to be this early afternoon so we're going to jump on this and y'all enjoy the video All right, so I feel completely comfortable going ahead and taking these off. It's tacked on both sides in different corners, so I don't feel like it's gonna tweak anywhere. We'll go ahead and pull the ratchet strap off and out of the way. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and get this off. We'll ground off. Make sure everything's out of the way. Now we're gonna flip the frame completely over back to the top side and we'll be working on the back end of it. We got the trailer frame flipped upside down back to the top side of the frame. How do we know? Because we labeled it. What, what else do we know is that that's the front and this is now the back because we wrote front on that uh, front piece of the frame up there and remember that when we pulled measurements we pulled from the front so I'm no longer pulling from here now I've got to pull from down there I already pulled the measurements off that cross member over there it's 42 and a half inches so now I'm gonna pull from back there which is the front back here to about right in here I think is where I measured it at Check one more time, make sure nothing warped, moved while we're welding, because metal does contract and expand when it heats and cools. OK, 
Got the final cross member tacked in place. We're gonna flip the frame over, tack from the bottom side. That should mean that everything is tacked nice and secure in place. I'm not worried about it moving too much. We'll go ahead and pull measurements on it, make sure everything is still square like I said before. Then we're gonna take and clamp it down to the trailer some way, shape, or form. I'm not exactly sure how I wanna do it yet. You always clamp your piece of uh, metal or project or whatever, you clamp it down best you can. That way you can weld it sections at a time as it heats, cools, contracts, expands, all that good stuff. It's not warping your metal. The clamps hold it down nice and straight. That's what I plan on doing with this somehow. I'm gonna clamp it down to the trailer. I'm not exactly sure how yet. I'm gonna get that figured out. That should mean that everything's tacked up pretty good. And depending on my definition of tacking or your definition of tacking, you could just put one little small spot wheel. And that's fine and dandy for the project that you're working on. And you need to move something around a lot. You need to bend it. That little bitty tack is wonderful because you can break it, you can bend it, you can manipulate it how you want to do that. On a bigger project like this where I'm sitting here and I'm moving this around, I don't have any kind of lifting apparatus. It's just me moving it around, slamming it, dropping it, doing whatever. I like to go ahead and do a solid weld, about a half an inch. I still call it a tack weld, but technically it's more than just a tack because it's, it's, it's elongated. It's, it's, about a inch, it's about a half an inch long. Like I said, I'm moving around. I don't want it to move. I squared it up pretty good from the beginning and I'm still certain that it's square so I go ahead and run them half inch tack wheels whatever you want to call them they may not be taxed to you but whatever that's my definition of tacking on this project like I said other little projects where I'm bending stuff it may just be a quick bzz, little spot wheel like I said everything's tacked up nice and good we'll go ahead and pull the clamps off Go ahead and pull the ratchet strap off. Once the ratchet strap is off, we'll go ahead and pull the square. We're gonna pull diagonal measurements, put the square in every corner. When I go to pull something square, or make sure something is square, what I do, the fatter part of the speed square here is easier to balance. Instead of trying to balance this uh, short piece, I take the fat piece, you can put your fingers in there, put your fingers up here, whatever. Take that fat piece, hold it against the object, and then slide it in. Couldn't see that from back there. We'll do it a little bit closer. Take the fat part of it, put your fingers through, put it on the object, make sure it's sitting flat because it's easy to balance this way, and then slide it up. And you're checking down here at this point to see how far it sticks off of the metal. And so far, everywhere that I stick it, it's looking good to me. Good, good, good. Now, me sitting here by myself again pulling diagonal measurements is making sure that it is true square all the way across so we're at 82 and three quarter which is what the trailer the original trailer was again taking to the factor that I'm pulling it by myself if I had somebody helping me like right now I'm trying to reach and line it up it's a real pain if I had somebody helping me you know it may be a little bit more accurate but uh, if we can get... all right so instead of going from back here we'll go from up here go ahead and find it find that grip keep pulling so the tape sticks pull tight pull tight pull tight pull tight don't let any tension off we get down here right on 82 and three quarter maybe a 30 second more again it's not the cleanest cuts on a piece of metal so the ends are not exactly flush i don't know what i was pulling on, on that side because i didn't really look at that corner when i did but by definition this thing is square so we're going to get this thing clamped down as soon as i can figure out exactly how i want to do that we'll get it welded out right now
I got the trailer frame clamped down to the upper frame of my trailer. I put a clamp everywhere that there's gonna be a weld. That way, that spot right there is not gonna move. I'm actually gonna add one here and here just for the extra uh, precaution. I'm not gonna weld that side over there right now because there's nothing holding it down to keep it from moving. Once this side cools, I'll take the frame, flip it around. I'll weld that side. Once that cools, I'll flip it over, repeat the process. Also, while it's clamped down, I'll go ahead and run these inner beads. So there's gonna be right much welding going on right here. I think I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to my leather, keep from burning this fleece up any more than what it already is. It does not hold sparks back very well. But yeah, we're gonna get this thing welded out today. Let's get this done. <laughs> 